Hi everyone, John Sielski here with a brand new Today's Voice YouTube video. We are going to jump right in where we jumped out last time concerning this pale horse rider who's part of the fifth seal mentioned in the book of the Revelation of Jesus, chapter 6. So if you have a Bible with you and you'd like to follow along with us, I'd encourage you to do so. And we're just going to get into some great stuff here. Uh, Revelation chapter 6, we're going to look at the 8th verse here. It says, And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death, and hell followed with him. So we know that Jesus Christ's death was the death of every man. He did not just come to die for us. He came to die as us and as our substitute. And it says hell followed with him. We know that when Jesus Christ rose from the dead, he led captivity captive out of that place. But we also understand now that if we don't recognize that Jesus Christ's death was our death, then we're going to kind of bring some hell upon ourselves. And in particular, uh, it's called the second death. Uh, the second death is mentioned later in the book of the Revelation, and the second death is any dying that religion convinces us that we have to do on top of the death that we have already mutually died in Christ's body on the cross of Calvary. Yes, it is appointed unto men once to die. And guess what? Good news, ta-da! We have all died. We all died in Christ. When that one man died, all men died. Jesus Christ, by the grace of God, has tasted death for every man in the mind of God. When Jesus died, we all simultaneously died together in Him. Now, if we don't understand that, then we're going to try to kill ourselves a second time, over and above and beyond, what Jesus' death has already accomplished. <laughs> and that is hell. That is a whole lot of hell, a, a whole world of hurt that we will uh, sometimes endlessly and needlessly bring upon ourselves because we don't understand this lamb, this land, this glorious land and what he has accomplished for us. So his name is, was death and hell followed with him says, And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. So power is given unto this pale horse rider over the fourth part of the earth. And right there, a lot of end time events teachers who think that the book of the Revelation is to be taken literally go ballistic because end time events teachers are convinced that somehow or another between the cross, the resurrection, the ascension, Jesus being seated now at the Father's right hand and pouring out his spirit upon all flesh that somehow now magically somewhere along the way Jesus has become mad at the whole world and now he is hell-bent on wiping out 25% of the human race, or the human population. But if we understand that the book of the Revelation was written in signs and symbols, which it is, then we might need to start asking some questions about whether or not there's a deeper spiritual meaning here. And, you know, versus, you know, if your right eye offends you, pluck it out. If your right hand offends you, cut it off. If your right foot offends you, cut it off. Somehow or another, when we read that passage of Scripture from the Gospels, we kind of get the clue that Jesus doesn't mean that we should really gouge our eyes out or cut off our right hand or cut off our right foot. But yet when we read the book of the Revelation, somehow our brain flatlines and we think this stuff is to be taken literal. It is not. Revelation chapter 5 describes the Lamb, who is Jesus Christ, as having seven eyes <laughs> and seven horns. We know for a fact Jesus Christ does not have seven eyeballs and seven horns coming out of his head. Come on, this is all symbolism. It's signified. It's written in signs and symbols or signified. We need to understand the signs. We need to understand the symbols. We need to start getting a deeper understanding of how God actually talks and what he actually means from his point of view 
behind what he is saying. And so if we're going to understand how this pale horse rider, whose name is Death, has power over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and hunger and death and the beasts of the earth, we also have to take into account the black horse rider who preceded the pale horse rider. The black horse rider is, is connected to the third seal. And um, the black horse rider, let's just look for a second, um, he had a pair of balances in his hand. A, a scale or a pair of balances in those days was used to make a purchase. The black horse rider is all about a redemptive purchase. The pale horse rider shows what we're redeemed from. All these things that the pale horse rider was given power to do, to kill with a sword, hunger, death, and beasts of the earth, all those things are listed in Deuteronomy chapter 28 as being part of the curse of the law. So uh, the pale horse rider is given power over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword, with hunger, with death, and with the beasts of the earth. But never forget that the pale horse rider was the death of every man and every woman. The pale horse rider was the death of every human being. So what is this fourth part? Well, again, if we go back to the black horse rider, we see that as this black horse rider is riding forth, there's a voice that comes uh, from the midst of the four beasts that says a measure of penny for a wheat, or, oh yeah, a measure of penny, a measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. One plus three equals four. There's your fourth part. A measure of wheat for a penny. Three measures of barley for a penny. One plus three equals four. Barley and wheat were sown at the same time of year. Barley came to harvest first. Wheat is a little more hardy. And wheat takes longer to come to harvest. Wheat comes to harvest during the Feast of Pass or Pentecost. Barley comes to harvest at the Feast of Passover. So Passover you have barley, Pentecost you have wheat. They're sown, however, at the same time. The barley represents the Gentile aspect of the church, whereas the wheat symbolizes the Jewish part of the church. They're both sown at the same time, all Jews and all Gentiles died at the same time as the pale horse rider because Jesus Christ became death and died the death of every Jew and Gentile. He literally absorbed all of the curse of the law. He was given power over the fourth part of the earth. The fourth part would be the three measures of barley and the one measure of wheat. The three measures of Gentile, the one measure of natural Jew, all becoming one new man in Christ on the cross. Ephesians 2, he broke down the middle wall of partition between Jew and Gentile and made in and of himself one new man. So the fourth part that the pale horse rider has power over, the fourth part is the whole of humanity. And he has power over them to make them into a brand new creation. He killed every Jew and Gentile alike in the body of his own flesh with the sword, hunger, death, and beasts of the earth. He absorbed not only all Jews and Gentiles in the body of his own flesh, but he also became the curse. He who knew no sin was made to be sin for all of us. Galatians 3 says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us. Us means all Jews, all Gentiles. The three measures of barley Gentile, the one measure of wheat natural Jew, all died in him as he absorbed them and all of our curse into himself. Jesus is not coming back to wipe out 25% of humanity. He had power over the fourth part, which is the whole part of every person who ever lived Jew or Gentile, and he has already put all of us to death in and of himself and that my friend is not only the truth but it is very good news the future is looking brighter and clearer all the time the fog is going away the haze is lifting and all we're seeing is the glory of him who is the lamb and the very light 
the light of God himself. And so tune in next week as we're going to look a little bit more at some of these things. Trust you were blessed with that today. Study it out a little bit more on yourself. See what Holy Ghost gives you on top of this, and you will be blessed as you do. Love you all. Be sure to check out our website, todaysvoice.org. You can sign up for our daily emails called Today's Voice. Also, there are uh, some CD ordering info on the website should you be interested in any longer versions of what you are seeing here, some audio versions. So uh, be sure to take advantage of those resources. Love you guys. See you next week. God bless you. Amen.